So we've done chemical reactions. We have done moles. And you're going, that's fantastic, but now what? Like, how are we going to use this stuff? And that's where the term stoichiometry comes in. So stoichiometry really means is it's going to be using the balancing chemical reactions and the moles to use predicting chemical reactions, so uh, predicting the products. Basically, what we're really focusing in on is if I put five grams of this stuff in on the left hand side, how much product am I going to get out? So up until this point, we've done everything qualitatively, meaning we've just kind of looked to see what observations were, were occurring. We never actually looked to see what specifically was coming out of a chemical reaction and how much of it. Now we're actually going to look at that piece too. So let's begin. So it's been a long time since we've done stuff. So let's let's review real fast. So let's just do real quick name the compounds in this in in this reaction. You know, it's been, you know, a couple weeks since we've really done naming compounds. We've focused on numbers. So take a minute, pause, read through this real fast and write down what you see. Okay, so obviously this guy here is sodium. This is good old water or if we want to go molecular, got to go back to that naming. It's coming up soon dihydrogen monoxide okay you have sodium hydroxide and of course hydrogen gas this is just straight up hydrogen okay now you want to balance the reaction so again pause balance the reaction come back Excellent. Okay, so well, we can clearly see that uh, the major problem we have here is our hydrogens. We've got three on the right and two on the left, so that's not going to work. So I'm going to make myself an even number on the right-hand side. That gives me four. I have to put a two here, and then I have to put a two here, and now everything is balanced out. So hopefully you're able to do that as pretty much as quickly as I am, and you're going to be in good shape for the midterm. So now I've got this chemical reaction. Now, no, We've been doing this, and we're balancing. You're like, okay, so so what? So both sides are equal? Great. What does that really mean to me? Well, what actually means is these numbers that are out in front are a specific ratio of these substances in this chemical reaction. So to make this reaction work perfectly, these coefficients actually represent a ratio of this ratio is a ratio of moles. Not anything else. Not really atom. I mean, yeah, atoms a little bit, but not really atoms. Definitely not grams. These are all mole amounts. So if I take two moles of sodium and combine it with two moles of water, I will get two moles of sodium hydroxide and one mole of hydrogen. This is what I love about chemistry. Two plus two equals three in this because it's two plus two equals one equals two plus one. And how does that work out? That's just like, what, huh? So that's what I love about chemistry. Two plus two equals three in chemistry. Um, and it just blows people's minds because we're talking about moles. So if I put in four moles of chemicals on the left-hand side, I'll actually only produce three moles of chemicals on the right-hand side. Not a very fish efficient reaction because I'm losing a mole of substances as I go. Now, oops. Let me get rid of that ink so we can actually read what it says. Okay, so what we can actually do is use this, use these chemical reactions and use these coefficients to predict how much of a substance will be produced in the chemical reaction. So let's jump into that now. So you've got all these ratios. Now, in the previous one, I, I went through, it's like, okay, it's 2, 2, 2, 1. But I want to jump into something a little bit harder. So let's balance this qu reaction pretty uh, real quick. So, so you can see that in this reaction, I have two aluminums on the left. And if I want to create a ratio of aluminum to aluminum chloride, let's say, well, it's two aluminums will produce two aluminum chlorides. But what if I said to you I have three chlorines? Well, the ratio doesn't change. The ratio is still based on the chem on the coefficients in the chemical reaction. So three chloride, th three chlorines will still be equal to two AlCl3s. But let's say I give you a for instance. What if I didn't have three chlorines. Let's say I had six chlorines. How many AlCl3s am I going to get? Well, I go back to that ratio and I see, okay, well, it's a three to two ratio. So if I double the number of chlorines, that means I'm going to double the number of AlCl3s. And I'm going to get four AlCl3s. And we can keep working with this ratio. No matter what, I mean, I'm using simple examples here. Of, okay, it doesn't really matter. It's two to two, three to three, whatever it happens to be. 
we're going to work with this, and I'm going to show you how to set up problems no matter what I did. So let's say I didn't have three chlorines, I had 2.25 chlorines. Okay, now what do I do? Okay, well, let's get into that right now and figure out how that works. So here's an actual example. So copy this example down now so that you can have it in your notes and you're not follow, you know, you have it so you can just write right underneath it. So again, pause the video, copy this example down. Okay, so as in any problem, any mathematical problem, I'm going to say this a hundred times, you're going to hear this in every single mathematical video we do, it's going to say, the first thing you do is write down what you're given. Now, in this problem, I am given 558 grams of iron. So I have a chemical reaction. This is my given. But notice it's a product, not a reactant. So that's the key in the stoichiometry problems. You don't have to be given reactants. You can give anything in a chemical reaction and be able to work around that that number to find other stuff. So they want me to find how many grams of CO are going to be produced, I'm sorry, are going to be needed to react in this chemical reaction to produce 558 grams of iron. So the first thing you always do is write down what you're given, 550 gram Fe. Now, I say it in class and you guys are already thinking it, when in doubt, mole it out. That's right. So I'm going to set up my little conversion. So I'm in grams, I can't work in grams, so I've got to convert to moles. On the bottom are going to units for what I have, and on the top are the units for what I want. So I want to convert to moles. Now, where am I going to go to find the information for my given? Well, I'm going to go back to that periodic table. And I look at the periodic table, and the weight for her iron is 55.85 grams. Now, this is what makes it different from mole ratio, from mole conversions. We did this in mole conversions, but this is where we stopped. So now, I actually have to use the information from the chemical reaction. Now we did this same basic ratio from the from mole re, uh, mole conversions, but we didn't really do anything more with it. We just stopped there and said, "Bam! There's a number of moles." Now I've got a chemical reaction to work with, and that's the key to stoichiometry questions. And in stoichiometry questions, you always have to use this chemical reaction that's right there. So now I go to my chemical reaction. Well, what I do doesn't change. The units for what I'm given are on the bottom. Now I've already canceled out grams of Fe, so now I'm in moles of Fe. So moles of Fe go on the bottom. I want CO, so CO goes on the top. Now I go to the chemical reaction, and I look at those coefficients, and I see that the ratio of iron to CO is 2 to 3. So that 2 of the iron goes on the bottom, and the 3 from the CO goes on the top. 2 goes down there, 3 goes up there, you're like, whoa, what just happened? That's right, folks, I have mad PowerPoint skills. Feel free to rewind that and watch that again and again. So notice that I took the 3 coefficient from the CO, and it goes on the top because it's what I want. The 2 coefficient for Fe goes on the bottom because it's what I was given in the first place, was iron. Now, I've successfully converted into moles of, of carbon monoxide. Now, notice the question says, how many grams? So I'm not done. I have to now convert back to grams. And so now it's simply a mole conversion again. It's just simply convert to grams of what I want. So on the bottom, go the units for what I'm given, moles of carbon monoxide. On the top, go the grams of carbon monoxide. And I know that no matter what I'm oops, no matter what I'm doing, I use the weight from the periodic table. And I know that one mole of any substance is equal to the weight from the periodic table of that chemical. I add up one carbon, one oxygen, so 12.01 plus 16, I get 28.01. Now, here is where this is majorly different from what we did before. Everything else we did before was always one-step problems. Now, this is a multi-step conversion. What I want to do is I want to multiply everything on the top, and I want to divide it by everything on the bottom. Parentheses are your friend. Put the top in parentheses, hit divided by, put the bottom in parentheses, and solve. And when you solve this, you'll get 420 grams of carbon monoxide. Now, stoichiometry problems are not hard at all. If you could do mole conversions, you can do a stoichiometry problem. The real key is this piece right here. So let me break this down for you real fast. Some of you are like, okay, so how do I remember all this? Okay, so this piece here is the conversion from grams to moles. Okay? 
this piece here is the mole ratio from your reaction. And this, well, that kind of just depends on what you want to do with the problem, but usually it's now the conversion of moles back to grams. And then, of course, here's the answer. And the only reason it's down there is because I couldn't fit it right there. Okay? So that kind of lays it out for, for you. That's a, that's a nice little format. And, of course, this is your given. So that's the number in the problem that they gave you to work with. So let's do some more examples so we can see how this works in a variety of different permutations.